Uh, so I was speaking about the leptomeningeal space predominantly. Um, so the leptomeninges um, are a, another anatomic compartment in the central nervous system that is often neglected. So the, the brain uh, and the spine's parenchyma is really served um, and protected by the blood-brain barrier and the cerebrospinal fluid is really, um, its, its composition is, is governed um, by the blood CSF barrier which is uh, formed by the choroid plexus. So I discussed um, potential routes for uh, cancer cell entry into the leptomeningeal space as well as immune cell entry into this space. Um, and then I discussed um, some novel findings, um, both for myself and others, that might explain um, how uh, immune cells might exit the space um, and how we might um, actually kind of therapeutically intervene in this area. Um, and so the, my work really really focuses on uh, cancer within the leptomeningeal space and uh, in, in studying the cancer in this space, we, one of the questions we really wanted to ask was how, how is it that cancer lives in this space because the cerebrospinal fluid is actually a very, uh, it's a very nutritionally sparse material, right? So there's not very much protein, there's not much glucose, um, nor are there many uh, growth factors are metabolic intermediates, so to really sustain cancer cell growth, and yet the cells grow in this space. Um, so through iterative in vivo selection of some uh, mouse models, I was able to create um, some subpopulations of cancer cells that grow within the leptomeningeal space. And looking at um, gene expression profiling, I was able to find that the cancer cells that, are, uh, that have the capacity to live within this environment, uh, they secrete a factor called complement C3 and uh, doing some mechanistic work in both in vitro and in vivo and from human samples we were able to find that the cancer cells uh, secreting C3, um, that a split product from this C3A uh, leads to activation of the C3A receptor on the choroid plexus and that this leads to uh, opening of the blood CSF barrier and entry of some plasma contents into the CSF. That this alters the composition of the cerebrospinal fluid such that it's able to uh, sustain cancer cell growth. Um, so in this way, the cancer cell um, broaches the blood CSF barrier um, and creates a, a leaky kind of almost pseudo edematous situation for itself and that this is really one of the ways in which cancer is able to circumvent the natural anatomic barriers. Uh, well, uh, the, the cancer cell C3, right, it, the, the way that it signals to the choroid plexus is uh, through the choroid plexus's um, C3A receptor, and this is a G-protein coupled receptor, and so it's a very druggable target. In fact, there are uh, C3A receptor agonists and antagonists that have been previously generated um, that have been used in, in the context of, of asthma. And so, although they were not useful for asthma, perhaps they might be useful in this context. Uh, well, so in, in the United States, we already have a kind of a system in place to train uh, neuro-oncologists. And so the, the kind of the, the path in the United States is really uh, after, after residency in uh, neurology or in medical um, oncology, uh, then you could do a, another level of subspecialty training in neuro-oncology, and that's typically about two years in length. Um, after that, um, there's a, a board examination, and then you become a neuro-oncologist. So I adore my job, so if it's a very personality dependent. It's quite difficult work. Um, our patients are extraordinarily ill, um, but uh, there's quite a lot of room for improvement if you're an optimist, as I am, and uh, there's quite a lot of research, and uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful interface to exist in, actually, in this place where you're able to um, to see patients, enroll them in clinical trials, um, and really feel that you're, you're contributing both to the patient in front of you, to the health and welfare of the person that you're taking care of, but also contribute to the larger project of, of helping lots of other patients.